Okay, everyone, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Please rise for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, much uh, better night tonight than uh, the last time we tried this. Yeah. Um, we even have power, which is great, um, and no rain, and just beautiful weather. Um, the first item on the agenda, and I'm going to need a photographer, um, is recognition of Laura Mikwajcik, if I got that right. Mikwajcik. Mikwajcik. I'm not even going to get this right. So of Laura, <laughs> for nine years of service um, on the Architectural Commission, and I, I want to recognize her publicly for for nine years of service, and I want you to come up and... You know? So here, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Did you get it? I got a couple, yeah. Yeah. But nine years of service on the Arlington That's a long time. That's a lot of dedication to the village. And we wanted to just present you with something to remind you of it. Service. I was really honored. Yeah, is there anything, any words you want to say? That's right. Okay. We're going to have talented people who are dedicated to preserving. You know, yeah. Well, yeah. We thank you for that. So thanks so much. So, um, homeowners associations, uh, Sebastian Pigeon, are you here? I don't think I saw online. I don't think so. I know we saw Ed last night, so he's not here uh, from Brookstone. And then anybody here from Martin Woods? I don't think so either. So, uh, open it up for public comment. Anyone have public comment in the room online? Anyone have public comment online? Can you hear us online? Guessing they can. Yeah, we can. Okay. Uh, you can. Do you have any uh, Ed? Do you have any comment? Uh, no, I was uh, actually tuning in for the uh, other business regarding the uh, subdivision presentation uh, near Briarcrest. Okay. Well, that'll be coming up maybe pretty fast. <laughs> Thank you, Ed, for being here. All right. All right. There's no public safety folks here tonight. Um, so we're just going to move to the consent agenda, and um, there's a few items on it. There's approval of the July 2024 Treasurer's Report, um, approval of the August 2024 Bill Warrant, approval of the regular board meeting minutes from the August 13th meeting. There is one edit, um, and you have a new copy in front of you. Um, Meyer was spelled wrong, uh, M-E-Y-E-R, but it should have been M-A-I-E-R. Other than that, that's the only change from what was uh, in the board packet. Um, the executive session minutes are totally different. I don't know if you looked at them. Um, they're, you know, it's a very short um, confidential executive session minutes, but Vic uh, totally changed them today. Um, and the other item, uh, number 10 on the list, is consideration of a temporary Class E liquor license for the Blue Fig Cafe. This is for um, Apple Fest um, coming up here quickly. And um, basically, the, you already approved the same license, uh, a temporary license for Strawberry Fest. So this is just for another festival. So um, unless there's questions, comments, uh, or somebody wants something removed from the consent agenda, I'm looking for a motion to approve. OK, uh, moved by Trustee O'Connor. Seconded by? Second. By Trustee Tanucci. Roll call, please. Trustee O'Connor? Aye. Trustee Tanucci? Aye. Trustee Borowski? Aye. Trustee Jamil? Aye. Trustee O'Reilly? Aye. Okay, motion motion carried. Thank you. I think Blue Fig would get a permanent license. They'll do what? Get a permanent license? That would be nice. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so now we're going to move to the other business. And this is the way these things go. Um, 11 and number 12 are going to be deferred, and I'm going to let Vic give an explanation as to why. 
yes, we had uh, scheduled for tonight a public hearing on the amendment to the annexation agreement. Um, and in the various iterations of the agenda, that item got dropped. And so we don't have it on the agenda. As a result of the Open Meetings Act, we can't conduct the public hearing, and we're going to have to push it off until next month. So uh, without the annexation agreement hearing, we can't act on the other two items. So they are, uh, I think it's October 8th, they'll be back before you. Any questions? Did that jam them up? Uh, I did speak with their attorney today. They understand what that is, and you know they're they're going to be ready for that meeting and hope to move forward. Then. Thank you. Okay, we'll keep ourselves moving. So, um, Joe Lucania, I got it right, um, <laughs> is going to make a presentation um, for the development that is by Valley Bunyan there. Um, next to Briarcrest, Briar, Briarcrest. So I have the slides that you, um, the new slides, the new presentation. Do you want to come to t towards the front so we can hear you on the phone, and I can bring the presentation up, and you, I can drive or do the best yeah, that I can drive it. And uh, oh, I guess I need to present first. Hold on a second. What a system. Oh yeah, <laughs> high tech right there. Well, when we move, we will have a better better audio arrangements. I am sure, confident. So, um, I will ask everyone at home if they can see the presentation. Yep, we can see it. Okay, good. Um, yes, I can see it. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting us know. Okay, Joe, take it away. Tell me where you want me to go. You can, yeah, I just did it as a slideshow again to make it easy. So you can go to the next slide. And. So this is basically just the update. I did what you guys asked me asked me to do, um, which is give you a tentative site plan. Um, the rest, uh, I'll go over it, but you can skip the next, uh, or go to the next slide. So updated, I reduced the, I was originally 31 or more. I reduced it to 30, so 30 makes sense, 30 lots. Um, I talked to Paul, so Gora, now that's his name, um, the fire chief, yesterday on the phone, we had a great conversation. We agreed to partner together to build a park and a uh, putting green type area behind the new firehouse um, that our walking trails will be connected to. Um, that'll be firehouse themed. Um, again, walking trails, um, again, 30 homes that are going to be on water. Um, I've noted the scenic corridor on the drawing that we discussed. So you know where it is, and I added to the slide, you know, so you guys know that I'm serious and staying in this deal. I'm actually going to live in the subdivision, so I'll be a resident. Great. So you go to the next slide. Okay, so this is the new site plan um, that you asked me for, and I included it on a separate file that I sent Chris. Um, that if you guys want to look at it, same thing with my resume. I made it as a PDF. So it winds up being 30 homes, all the homes. The average actual lot size is about three quarters of an acre, but density is still 30. And then the rest of the land will be used for the corridor, for the wetlands, and for general area. So that is tentatively, you know, before we go to full engineering, what it's going to look like. Do you have any questions on that? Yeah. Anyone? Need to is the entrance off of Route 83? Yes. Where it is now. This is this is this yeah. black line yeah. road. Yeah, it, it might not be perfectly to scale, but it's pretty close to where it's the same. It's the same entrance that's there now. That's already approved by the state. Will that's there be the entrance? Will there be an entrance to the Briarcrest uh, subdivision? Uh, to be determined, and that's up to the fire department. If it, if there is, it'll be gated or a breakaway gate, as we discussed. If they need it for safety. I also brought up to Paul the fact that we could dead end the other cul de sac circle at the firehouse and give them access, and he was all for that if you know if we get if the village gets permission to put it there. So there'll be an exit entrance for safety and police, but not the main entrance will, for people will be on 83. 
So you're saying that there could be, this could be access to Briarcrest if Briarcrest allows it? This well, no, I mean, it's really up to the fire fire department if they need okay. a secondary access. And the first plan is to put it right next to the fire station. I see right here. Yeah. Okay. But that's really a good idea because previously they had one way in and one way out in their station. Yeah. We talked about that at on mm -hmm. you know, with what do you do if cars are backed up north, east, west, and north, south? Right. Them, that's not. That's really a good idea. Oh, yeah. they could come out this yeah. way. Yeah, Paul said they do it multiple ways. They do it with electronic clickers. They do it with a breakaway. So there's multiple options. Got it. This the scenic corridor. Yep. Um, that's in the backyard of two people. No, I'd say the backyard of almost everybody. I mean, uh, it follows the, it follows all of. This is the advocates, right? Yeah. Here. I missed it on on this one. Yeah, I just wrote it in there, but we're keep yeah, we're okay. keeping that. I got it. Okay, yeah. thanks, thank you. And again, you know, the berms or whatever we put in for noise will meet whatever code there is for height. Right. So this is 83 right here. This is at the kiss. Yep. Right here. Okay. Okay. Is is this all your property? Yes. There is no more of your property. In other words, the wetlands. I can't read the words. Um, yeah. There. Yeah. I mean, there. We have to have retention, detention. Yeah. We have to, are that those ones, the, those? Yeah. Those will all be on our land. Yes. We're keeping. Where are they? I can't. I oh, can't so it, well, it's hard to say based on what it is right now. But the blue is the pond. That's not really a pond, but it is on the on the floodplain map. So that stays. And then the green that's in the center right there, that is retention, detention, and wetland area. So that will be behind all of the lots. And then the gray um, in the front um, lower left corner, that's just a buffer because it's so, because we have to have that 100 foot easement. So it'll be trees, bushes, something. So we're not taking away, What's we're not the getting. What's smallest block? What? Your average is three quarters. What's your smallest? Probably 0.7. And, and at the end, I mean, we had this conversation before. It's really about, you know, I mean, some of it's sales driven. Like, we're keeping density what you want. We're just reducing the size of the actual property so people don't have a gigantic yard to mow, which they don't want. We have so many. Well, that's why it's a PUD. I mean, that is one of the one of the reasons. But with the the setup of the elevation. Mm -hmm. I would suspicion that most people are going to want at least a three car garage. Four, yeah. How can the homes be designed so that the garage doors aren't hanging out the front of the house? You'll see it. It's in, but do they have enough? Yeah, of, yeah. Oh, plenty. Yeah, it's on, it's on one of the slides. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to go to the. Tight. That's it's not. It's just the. The home, the dotted lines are not the size of the home. Those are just the uh, outlines for the lot numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah, so don't, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, I, I told Chris that I didn't want to confuse people, but that's how um, CAD draws in a text box, so I just left the dotted line. I'm easily confused. Okay. So. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you, go, if you want to go to the next slide. So that's what. That's what the homes, that's the elevation of the home. So they're all either side load or side and front. So no more than one garage door will face the street. And there's plenty of room. So that is the architecture that we're thinking, you know, like, uh, you know, French country, stone, um, like I said, cedar, slate roof. Do we allow cedar? Do we allow cedar? We allow cedar? Yes. <laughs> we do? I have cedar. Well, it'll be, it'll be fake. I mean, I'll it. it'll be synthetic. Oh, you mean talking you know, the, <laughs> you're talking the roof yeah. or the siding? The siding. Oh, yeah, I have cedar in my house. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So it'll be a combination of cedar and stone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you got to stain it a little. Yeah, but it's synthetic, so it lasts, you get a 50-year warranty. 
You don't ever, it's pre, pre-finished. You don't ever have to paint it. Does it look real? Yeah, you'd never know the difference. Well, I don't know it. Under- yeah, and if, if it comes to like the architectural committee, we'll have samples of that ready to show you. Well, we get a say in it too. I know. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, and that's like that's actually a, a true rendering of what the home will look like. You know, so you can see where the stone is, and there'll be many elevation options, so nothing matches. And then the next slide is that. Oh, sorry, hold on a second. Oh. Somebody's taking a picture. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Which one do you want to take a picture of? <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk her. Okay. And then you asked what they're going to look like next to each other. So that is a true scale of a six foot tall human being and the distance between the homes. So it's how, approximately how many feet? About 60, about 60, 60? about 60 feet in between total, the homes. Total. Yeah. So yeah. 30 on each yeah. side of. Yeah. At the, at the absolute maximum. Because on the side loads, they're smaller, but that obviously has sure. a driveway. Sure. And, and what's the square footage of those? So, those particular models are about 5,000. Chris, you're thinking. So. No, no, no. That question was answered because that drawing doesn't depict the driveways, and obviously that throws the whole drawing off scale if you put the driveways in, right? Driveways, buffer, setbacks, that kind of thing. But driveways for sure. Keep going. Okay. Is everybody going to be a 5,000, give or take? Yeah, I mean, the, the smallest model that we talked about presenting is about 4,500 square feet. So between 45 and 55, I assume, will be average. It's all about them, yes. not including their space. Correct. Yeah. And there are, based on elevations of the final engineering, there probably will wind up being five lots that are English or walkout. Mm-hmm. So um, technically that'll probably all be, fin- like walkouts will definitely all be finished space. And then you asked for, um, especially Rhea, I know you did, ask for my resume of stuff I've done in the area. So I did two, and I included it as a PDF with Chris, so it's all of it. But these are just some of the homes I've built in the North Shore. Um, Matawa, um, Glencoe, Lake Forest, Panic Burn, Island Park. Um, and then the next slide is homes that I've built around the country for some of my clients that actually wound up living here. Be in Montana, um, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Orlando. Um, and obviously, we did our, my biggest project was MGM City Center in Las Vegas. Um, so you have that separate that you could send out as a PDF. Um, and then the next slide is basically here's the final concept. So we're asking for 30 30 single family homes, keeping an average of about three quarters of an acre, keeping all the wetland, the scenic corridor, all the open space, putting in a park and putting green, city water, um, Lake Michigan water, an HOA with you guys, you know, helping determine what it's gonna say um, that'll meet all the village standards. Um, 4,000 plus square foot state-of-the-art homes, the trails, and then, you know, keeping everything intact, as you'd ask, as far as trees, bushes, et cetera. How wide are the streets projected to be? Um, I don't, based on, I think, 18, I think 18 feet is so if standard. There, if there were cars parked on both sides, could a vehicle get? Yes, yeah, but not two. Can I ask the question another way? Do we, do we have a standard now for the width of the roads, Jeff, do you know? Uh, I'd have to look it up. We don't? We do. We do? I don't know what it is. You know off the top of your head? <laughs> I'm, ju- I'm wondering if it's similar to Ravenna, which is up north on 83. Yep. Uh, Laura lives there. So. Or the preserves. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, what the the road's not the difficult part. I mean, it could be wider. That's not really changing the lot size at all because we have that hundred foot buffer that we have to keep, so we could easily push stuff back a little bit. That's 
not. Do you think the last smaller is off? Oh. The private roads, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only sort of roads are part of the lot. Yeah. Well, no, I think you want to make it part of the common area. That creates a whole other problem. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I, was thinking and I think what that. Reed is saying is we don't want another road issue. Well, then the preserves preserve has the same, they have the same issues. It's, admittedly, it doesn't bother some people. So if there's two cars parked, you can't get through. Yeah. Were, yeah. I mean, well, we and it's it's there aren't sidewalks, so there's really not a lot of room for children to bike ride and tricycles, moms with strollers, that kind of thing. Right. Well, and we'll have a walking path to supersede all that, so there will be a place to walk. I worry more. No, prevent it's a nightmare. No. Yeah, they don't have any place to put it. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, again, that's all done in engineering. So, I mean, yeah, you know, they consider all of that. I mean, we have a few, you know, we have two traffic circles, if that's what you want to call them, that can easily be piled in the center with snow. So that's like one place right there alone. Yeah. But people have parties, you know. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of question. That's where I'm coming from on it. It's oh, I understand. You know, there's no, like, Condos and townhomes have gas parking. Right. Sort of, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of cars will fit on these driveways, but yeah, obviously, if you have a huge party, there's going to be people parking in the street. I get it. First one in is the first one. <laughs> yeah. Well, so um, basically, I, I believe Joe's asking if um, we would refer this to our plan commission to review. That's what you're asking for tonight, to refer it? Correct. Yeah, so that's what the, the ask is. Um, the commission, I'm not. Well, Chris and I have discussed this, so based on, obviously, village timing, you know, if we count six months to be fair for all zoning, approval, and everything, that would put us in the, like, early, mid next year, um, early to mid next year for infrastructure, um, actual residential construction to start late you know, spring, maybe like summer of 2025, and it'll be for all, for all budgeting purposes about a three-year project from that point forward. Um, the only caveat to that is the water, you know, so that we, you know, obviously we can't deliver a finished home without water, so it's on somewhat on your time, you know, obviously whatever timeline we get to speed up, but the bringing city water to it as part of the timeline. When you say city water, do you mean like... Lake Michigan water, yes. So you don't go if we don't get water? That's what I'm well, hearing. I'm saying right now our, our system is a deep well at Lake Michigan, yes. Yeah. Correct. The, the right. So you won't, you won't proceed until we've got the makings of Lake Michigan water? Well, no, we could start the, we could do the infrastructure. We just have to leave the tap where it's going to be to tap yeah, into but, it. But isn't the, isn't the fire department going to hook up to our water system? Yes, and that's the that connection. That would be what you would tap into, I would suspect. Correct, yes. Okay. There's actually a county requirement that they will be close enough to a public water system that they would not generally be allowed to do a well. And that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Even if it, it, it's irrespective of the source of the well, it's right. just that there will be a public water system. Yeah. So it would be our current, our current. Right. If, well, if, well, if we're able to. Then that's a misnomer to say, I, I, I'm not going to go until I have Lake Michigan water. So then my next question would be, do we have the capacity to service this from our, our current well? Without displacing anyone. Yeah, we've got Without putting a burden yep. on, on it. Actually, I think we're looking for customers. Well, I I, I, I know that too. But but just as we started out with 
with Lake Michigan water, which is still an iffy. It's, it's not a, it's going to happen here. It may happen here. It may happen years from now. The timing is not, the timing of Lake Michigan water is not final. It's not. Right. Yeah, and I realize that. And, I, and, Paul, and Paul and I talked about that yesterday, like, you know, because that's part of their whole, you know, their whole strategy for the trucks and everything as well. A couple of questions, please. Please go. Trustee O'Connor, um, does your contemplation for the proposed new pathway touch that park? So is that a park that's going to be available for any general public people to have access to? Or is that park strictly for the 30, proposed 30 homes that, that's being proposed here? Do you know? Well, they're private roads. Like in your um, so I'm not sure where you're planning to run paths in there, right? So that's why I asked the question. Well, since we don't have a boatload of money right now, we don't have any proposed paths. Okay, so to, uh, thank you for that clarification. So my assumption... I would like a bridge across the road. Okay, we can work on that. We can work on that. So my question, um, or just, just confirm for me that that park proposal is really more for, this, for the access of the proposed homes, right? It's not no, not necessarily. I mean, the whole Briarcrest subdivision will be attached to it as well. We're put, we're putting a walking trail from, that'll end in the corner of their property. Oh, is that on the drawing? I'm sorry, I didn't see that. No, no, that was, it's in the notes. Oh. Yeah, and I said that in the last meeting too, yes. So the walking path will bring, will end at Briarcrest. Okay. So yes, they'll be able to. If I don't live in Briarcrest, how do I access that park? There's a public parking lot for the fire department. So you're saying you have to access it through the fire department? Or their parking, their parking lot. Well, you weren't. Yeah, we. Can, can I make a couple of comments here? So first off, as I read this diagram, the park is actually going to be on the fire department property. Okay. Correct. And second, there is now a pathway down Applekissick Road. Well, I still can't get to it though. Right? I know I can't either. Right, right. I can go to anywhere else that's up north. That's my question. I just asked him. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, but I wanted to point that out. So I mean, there is, right. there would be ways for other people to use that. Park and, and and there is a crosswalk going in now, whether it's safe or not, um, on Applekissick Road as part of this improvement project. So you'll be able to get to the downtown from the subdivision um, with the crosswalk that Rita got the grant for, right? Sunset Foods, okay. and so you could get people even coming um, from this area here to could actually get into the uh, to that park or get into that subdivision now. Um, once that's built. Which, so who who maintains that then? The, park, uh, the fire department? No, that's the fire department. Uh, the park will actually be owned by Vernon Township. Um, I believe that's what he said. And then we agreed to put in. Why Vernon Township? I think that's what he said because they're part of that. Is the fire house? Typically, the, the typically we'd have the park district own property like okay. that. You probably would want. That. But those are all the things that you can yeah, figure out. Right. Um, just asking yeah, yeah. I mean, still yes, talking. and then we would actually, I said we would put some money in the HOA for any, you know, for some, you know, like is to contribute yearly to some type of upkeep or cleaning. Are you still doing a path along 83? Yes. Down to connect to the? Yes. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Where on 83? It'll be through this scenic corridor okay. where it's all wooded. And, yeah. Got money for a bridge? <laughs> <laughs> I no longer speak for the park district. They know what I do know. I think they would want the HOA to maintain it. Yeah, probably. Well, he said there's some grant money, so we would help, you know, contribute to that. But I don't know what that. I don't know the dollar amount or what it is. But the ownership goes to liability, right? I mean, it's on the HOA. Liability maintenance. Why yeah, have it's on the HOA? Yeah, but if there's a putting green, there are a lot of firemen who sit around waiting for fires to happen, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. There are other subdivisions in, in private park. True, park yes. Areas. Yeah. Right, but that's mostly private park, not really public park. That's kind of the, the that's why I asked the question about can anybody else use it? Is it private? Yeah, I mean, we agreed to help build it, so, you know, and it, but it will be public. Let me ask the question another way. Park at the fire station. Let me ask the question another way, because I do have some knowledge of this. The way the covenants, uh, whatever you want to call them, are written, um, the 
that would govern some of these things, including who's responsible for paying for insurance and so on. Correct? Ordinarily, yes. So it could be set up that way. So, and then that would be obviously anyone that comes in, buys a home, would be governed by those declaration of uh, covenants or whatever they want to call them, right? Yeah, because it's an HOA, right? So what? Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah. Way, yeah. as it's set up, and obviously there's a lot of details to be figured out, but if the arrangement is that the HOA is going to be covering things like maintenance and insurance, then that's going to be something that the CCNRs will have to incorporate a mechanism to not only require but to fund. And presumably there would be some kind of agreement between the Fire Protection District and the HOA for um, access and use and all that. It would all have to be kind of um, as part of the planning process. That would be put uh, through the commissioners to look at how, how that may or may not be done, right? Well, and I mean, not only does it have to be vetted from our end, it would have to then be solidified among whatever other entities are involved, whether it's the Park District, the Fire Protection District, or all of the above. Got it. Thank you. Keep going. <laughs> well, no more questions, just a comment. I think 30, 30 lots in this parcel is too dense. I uh, have no, no, uh, in my mind, no justification for three quarter acre lot sizes. I think it's too small and the density is too high. So you're out. Well, I don't know. If it goes to the plan commission and the petitioner is willing to bring that down, the plan commission works some kind of agreement out, I'm okay with that discussion. But I, when it comes back to me and it says 30 lots on this parcel, I'm still not in favor of it. Got it. Thoughts from anyone else? Uh, this is Manesh. I had one question. Just curious. With 30 families coming in, is there an expected annual revenue for the Longaru village of, of any sort? No, we, we don't levy a property tax, so we wouldn't be getting um, incremental. Income, but... Yeah, sales and income. Yeah, I mean, you could get... Um, it could bring more customers into the downtown or to the Sunset Foods or what have you, and we get sales tax out of it. Um, there, there would be impact fees that come to the village too. And yeah, it's a one-time. Yeah, no, I just had one. Uh, there's a lot of sustainability kind of thought process when people choose houses these days, right? Whether it is friendly for solar, uh, rainwater harvesting, all of those kind of things. So maybe this more to be a lot when the engineering comes in. Are we thinking through in terms of those uh, angles for these houses? Um, can, can you repeat that? I didn't quite get what you were saying. At the end, what, what are about uh, the what engineering? What I think is, are we... I was asking if the houses are going to be more friendly for solar roofing or rainwater oh, harvesting oh. kind of things, which a lot of buyers these days value more. That's a, that's a question for the developer. You know, there is an, um, an right. open item that never got done with the architectural commission that we did ask them for was, which was to put some codes in place for new construction that would marry solar into the design of it. So it's more architecturally pleasing, right? Typically, these things, you know, they get the glass panels put on the roof, but if it could be married in, there's new shingles and everything else. Um, but is that something you would consider? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this isn't really a solar state. So if uh, if somebody wanted it, we would definitely cross that bridge, but it's it's still not. It's still not where it needs to be yet, but there are technologies where, yes, you don't need a solar grid on your roof. So, yeah, we would, like I said, I'm not... The goal here is not to be difficult. Like, I'm trying to right. give you everything you want. And as long as it doesn't, you know, if it's solar, it's an upgrade anyway. You know, so the homeowner's paying for it. So we can steer them in a direction or just tell them if they're going to do solar, Long Grove approve this, you know, for solar panels. I'm fine with that. Yeah, or you could include it as part of your pricing for the homeowners. Yeah, as well. You know, it's interesting. I um, One of our neighbors... Um, put these new solar panels on, and they're interesting because somehow whatever um, their roof shingles are, um, 
they actually mirror that um, on the glass on on the top of the uh, solar panels. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, you kind of like you're looking at it, go, wow, that looks like shingles, but then you look closer and it's it's a panel, yeah, the panel, right? It's a standard panel. It's yeah. not the it's not the solar shingles. It's that. So I found right. that interesting too. Yeah, and that's why it's sort of more aesthetic than giant, you know, rectangular grids. Attached to the roof. I they're still, they still are, but they're yeah. but they're they blend in. They blend in better because yeah. they can yeah. flash them with like a shingle covering on it. It was interesting. It, yeah. maybe and if you guys pass a code for a specific type, and we'll we'll do, we'll doctor it in. That's not a problem. Like I said, that's not included in the standard price. Right. That would be offering. So we could just tell them these are the only ones you could use. Yeah. Sure. Did that answer your question? My question was. Uh, my question is a little bit different. Uh, the reason why I'm uh, re bringing it again is a lot of the houses need a lot of south exposure for a proper solar roofing. Uh, you know, we have heard that from a lot of providers. So I don't know how the houses are getting positioned in each of these slots, right? So that's why I was asking, is that thought process in mind? Not that every house is going to provide that. Uh, just trying to see if houses will be friendly towards that angle. You can answer it because a lot of them are yeah, with the exception south. of the ones on 83, they all face north south. North south, yeah. Yeah, yeah most right. of them are north south. Okay. Yeah. Sure, thank you. I've, I've walked that property, so I know <laughs> the fire station property at least. I didn't walk it when they're hitting golf balls in Valley Bunyan. <laughs> Very smart. Um, hey, so um, I guess going around the table, um, I'll, whoever wants to go first. Uh, would you want to refer this to the plan commission? Yes. Okay. Uh, Trustee Jamil. Um, yeah. Um, um, yes. In the caveat. What's the caveat? In the caveat. Um, I, I, I really, really appreciate that you are so willing to work with us. I think that you're certainly knowledgeable and and. and would be an asset to the community. I agree with Chris, it, especially being next to um, see which is Briar, Briar Creek. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just mumbling it. Being next to that community where there's more elbow room, it, it wouldn't need to be as much elbow room, but something that still works for you in this location that would somehow accommodate for larger lots, even if that was a, um, I, I think it was, I think it was Darlington Heights just recently wrestled with something for the last, a development for the last year, and they finally all agreed that, I think it was eight, eight luxury townhomes and 12 luxury homes worked really well and it, it was near the downtown so that's mm -hmm. why you know so on so I, I don't mean to be speaking on both sides of my mouth with saying more elbow room and then townhouses but if there was another configuration that i would like if you guys would approve it i would love to build luxury row homes on part of it i don't I, mean, I don't think you're going to get approval from the that, that. i mean that that would i mean because that would make we could easily fix you know, part of the problem with that, but again, I know you guys don't have townhomes in Long Grove, so yeah, but, I didn't even bring it up. But is, is, I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, to to make that area work with the TIFs and so on and so forth, we know we need density. Well, it's not in the TIF, though, so. Uh, yeah, okay. But, but that, that whole little area in there, mm -hmm. um, not everybody. Not every not everybody fits single family, and the the um, oh gosh I've got problems here the fields yes the zero lot lines but lots of elbow room that community works beautifully. You don't want anything that 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 much elbow elbow room on this lot. I, maybe you're not familiar with the fields. No, it's off of Kruger. Okay. Okay. It's fine. It's there's there are zero lot line homes, but there's a lot of a lot of land up there. And and well, that is part of why I proposed the lot being being smaller. And I, like nobody, I, I don't want to 
I don't, I just, I don't want to beat, forgive me, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but like nobody wants a giant lot anymore. Like all the luxury homes that have sold, Lake Forest, Lincolnshire, all these areas, they're all half acre, three quarter acre. They're huge homes. There's plenty of land around them, but they have less grass to cut. They got enough room for a huge backyard and pool. I know. You know but they just don't, you know, the, the days of mowing lawns and maintenance are over. So that, so there will be more elbow room because we're making the lot, the actual lot size is smaller, but there's still plenty of land. And and I get that I'm I'm in real estate. I, I get that, I, and I I I wouldn't say that nobody wants it because we well, don't have. I mean, there's exceptions. I we understand. Don't have, well, we don't have a problem with resale here. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and and that, you don't you never know if they're buying it. In you know, uh, I I would have preferred X, but I like the building, or I would. You, you know. No, I get it, and I you know, and I went over the all the zoning maps of Long Road. There's a lot of PUDs in Long Road. These lots right. are way smaller than an acre. Right. You know, yeah. and yeah. you know, even in Royal Melbourne, like some of the lots are 0 .6, 0 .7, 0 .8. So you know, and there's land around them. So that's the same. That's the, honestly the same concept I'm trying to do. <laughs> You know, some, something that that maybe coordinates visually yeah. with Briarcrest. So, so I'm not opposed to sending it to, uh, to sending it to the the architectural the well, the plan, the plan commission. Plan yeah. commission. Right. I, I I do have hesitations along with Chris the density of it. Can I ask a question? Um, would it be? Um, are you suggesting that? this be designed differently to allow for more open space or are you suggesting that maybe eliminating a, a, a lot or two or to, to get at what you're thinking? You know, so some of the houses could actually be closer together, but then there would be more open space, right? Well, and that's the idea. That's that's Karen's Corner and, and Deer Trail where, where the concept, it's a different concept. The yeah. concept is you, you put the houses a little closer together yeah, but you've got more elbow room out here. I'm perfectly fine it's, with that. It's, you know, that's that's a different way of, it, and it's the same way as the fields. It's just I live in a cluster development, so I know what you're talking about. So. Right, it's, <laughs> but you know, the, it, it yeah. works at the fields too. They just have yeah. a, a boatload more land in the yeah. days when the land wasn't as expensive as it is now. Right. Say it again. They use the land. Yes, correct, correct. So. I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I believe that you know what you're doing, and and I think you appreciate that. Well, yeah. No, I get it. Yeah, you know, and we want to we want to do what you guys want. We also want to do it ourselves, you know. So it's a combination of both. Can I move over this side? Okay. Um, I I agree with the person's attitude, but this will shock you. I I like Tom. I I think that our our hesitancy towards them is short sighted. Um and and I I would in the right place look at look very kindly at at Tom Hall in a combination with single family. Almost as the, the town homes being on the busy roads as a buffer to the to the other homes. And, and incorporate bigger homes more into Briarcrest visually, um, and so I, I I would I would consider that. But the the density as it is right now, I I I, I don't like it. At all. But I'll send. It. I appreciate that. I mean, is, and let me just like, is that something that potentially would be considered? Like if we put. I mean, these would be like South Loop style brownstones. I mean, they would be. So, so you have some residents, one here, you have some online. Yep. Um, you know, I don't know how they will feel about that. So, yeah. We we currently have no place for older people in this community who have raised their children. Now they have grandchildren, and they would like to stay close to their children or grandchildren. We don't have any place for them. And they do want, for the most part, first floor master bedrooms, primary bedrooms. You know, you can have the the, the garages, 
on 83, who cares, right? There's a, whatever. Um, but I, I, I agree with Bobby. I, I think that we have been close to it, and, and you have to say why. Why? They're, they're, why not make room for people who want to stay here or, or start here? Or start here. Yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah. Why not? Well, because then we stuff a whole bunch of people in a small space and put them in our schools. Have to pay the tax first. Well, but if you they don't have to. And if you oh, but they will. That's but if, in there too, right? if you design them for. Or also not talking if, inexpensive townhomes. Right. right. That's the other point. Right. So yeah. it would be luxury townhomes. Yeah. Uh, from what you. Yeah, doing. I mean, we proposed a, for in Libertyville a completely different project, a four-story brownstone with elevators. You know, so that would be perfect. Well, that would solve the problem of the first floor. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The whole goal, Libertyville had the exact same when, when we met with when I met with their zoning department. Like we want, you know, empty nesters, we want people to stay here and not move away. That was their whole concept. So I'm, you know, like I said, it, you, it's your village. You make the final decision, but I would absolutely consider that if you, if it makes sense. Yeah, not you know thirty of them. No, no, yeah. no, no right. Yeah, and so. and, and, and village wide, it depends on where. It is. Correct. I mean, you, you you wouldn't put that across the street here, but but there at, and there are many places around the town that that I think would be conducive to to a townhome mixed use development. Yeah. Um, Ken. I'm willing to move this forward. I want nothing to do with townhomes, row homes, condos, apartments, whatever you want to call them. I have nothing to do with any of that. And I understand your point about aging in place, but townhomes tend to be very vertical, whereas when you're aging, you want something more horizontal. That's kind of the opposite of what you need. Good, but you need an elevator. I, I, and I, I understand, and that's why the fields works, because there are, there are more single level type homes in there. And we do have a first floor master model, so that is one of the is one of the styles. So um, yeah, but if there's an elevator, who now, can... now oh, yeah, I know. this I is know. interesting. Just a side note. So in the downtown comprehensive plan, there is contemplated mixed use, and nobody's approached us with anything, right? It's because they know what. Um, no, it's in our comprehensive plan, though. So. No, no, no. They know what we think. They don't know. They they may see it on the plan yeah. that that we could do it, but they know the reluctance of this closed-minded. Ouch. Well, <laughs> that, oh, that was offended a, by that. I, 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 don't, I, I don't mean. I, I don't just mean spent that. the last week working on my son's three on my son's townhome, three floors. There's no way I'm going to buy one of those. Right. My knees can't take it. Okay. And if I put an elevator in, the expense of that condo is going to be more than my current home. Why in God's sakes would I move off to pay a higher tax bill when I can live in the house I'm living in right now? But would you, makes no sense to me. Would you if the, if the primary bedroom was on the first floor? No, because you still have to go to the second floor to do something. I, I wouldn't. I would, for the grandchildren. I that three-story that three thing, plus being my age or well, and, and I, I respect that because there's chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. Right. Exactly. You know, I, I get it. I, I, I understand what you're saying. Thank you. All right. So now I don't know if we've confused the issue even more or not. <laughs> I think um, that's a whole discussion for a different day. I mean, if we're going to go to a town, townhouse, row house, whatever kind of um, architectural style, I think we need to go to the community and say, hey, community, is this what you want or not kind of thing. Well, I, don't just, think I want to decide that. I just like to put it out there as a possibility for this community. Um, it, uh, how many people in Briarcrest told us we would destroy their property values by allowing the fire department to locate there? Obviously, that's not that's not accurate. If you, these are seven figures in, and up. Those aren't sold yet. I but mean, if we're going to east, or whatever they call it, east, those are all vacant sitting there. But there's a school, there's a school issue. issue there as well. Okay, maybe that's true, but this doesn't, which means it's going to be filled with kids or parents looking to put the kids in the right schools, and that's just going to drive off our 
infrastructure costs and more tax burden because we're pumping more kids into the school system and getting nothing out of it. So I'm going to give you my opinion. I, I have no issue with what's being proposed here. If it's a house less or two, probably better. But I don't have an issue with what's being proposed here. And I would prefer if there was um, condos, townhomes, or whatever, that it was in the downtown, um, mixed-use kind of thing married into the downtown. But that's that would be me. Like on the South 15. Well, that's a whole other story in itself. But uh, um, that's more commercial. But in the downtown here, that would be, you know, it, the uh, the, the Archer Triangle we got there. Yes. That to me that's where it fits. And I support that. So, anyways, I don't know where to go with this. So, I, uh, do we have enough? Um, what do I need to do to to refer it, or what do we need to do to refer it? Uh, we can simply have a motion to authorize it moving forward to the Planning Commission, and then yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, make a comment. Colin Allen. Yes, please. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, I just wanted to make the uh, the board aware um, that uh, the the exit onto 83 from Briarcrest has a stoplight, and that's a tremendously favorable thing because getting on and off of 83 at different times of the day, uh, and certainly heading south, is very difficult without a stoplight. So, in regards to this division, I guess uh, if, if there was any access. Uh, granted to the Briarcrest subdivision, unless there's a physical blocking of access to the Briarcrest subdivision, I suspect that uh, these homes would routinely enter and exit through Briarcrest in that stoplight, which would triple the number of homes being serviced by the Briarcrest Road. Uh, currently, I think there's 14 homes on it, and, and the addition of 30 would would certainly increase that. So that is of uh, some a consideration that I would hope you, if you'd pass this along to the plan commission, that you would make them uh, aware of. I have personal consider uh, thoughts on it as well because the connection to the Briarcrest Lane would be right in front of my house, uh, and the uh, I can't. It's in my front yard, so I can't block it with trees and bushes. But beyond beyond that, just as long as you keep in mind that uh, unless there's a physical barrier there, there will be a severe impact to the Briarcrest Lane residents. Um, just wanted to state that. Yeah, no, I hear you there. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate that. I would make a motion to refer this project to the plan. Okay, that's moved by Trustee O'Reilly, seconded by. A second. By Trustee uh, O'Connor. Um, roll call, I guess, right? Or uh, this is a voice vote, and just as a, a matter of clarification, that means nothing other than I not being I at all. <laughs> okay. I've <laughs> been here before. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Any nays? All right, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, time for the uh, village engineer's report. Okay, the engineer's report is in the board package. Just a couple of highlights for you tonight. Uh, village Hall expansion, ongoing uh, right next door here. Um, the underslab utility installations are nearly complete. and. Uh, the uh, foundation extension is uh, complete, so they've got their approval so they can start uh, uh, pouring the floor slab and then also uh, the vertical uh, framing. We've got a meeting tomorrow morning, coordination meeting with the, uh, the architect and the contractor, and we'll probably know more uh, on the schedule after that meeting. Will it be under roof before the snow flies? I hope so. I can ask the <laughs> contractor to better be. What? Well, per our project schedule, it better be <laughs> per our project schedule. We're that even with this slight delay, we're kind of on target for that, right? Yeah, for the new addition to be yeah, done. Yeah, there's by um, in the board packet somewhere. It's in there. Yeah. So uh, just jumping down, um, President Jacob mentioned it earlier, but the this is number nine. nine. The pathway uh, on the north side of Aptekisik Road is complete. So oh, that's exciting. Um, Jumping down to number 11, this is the uh, state's project for the Route 22 and Route 83 project. Uh, as I mentioned uh, at the HOA meeting last night, the state is moving forward into the design engineering, which is called phase two of that project. So they're going to award that contract uh, in mid-October. So that's that project is moving along. Um, wow. Still in the state's uh, multi-year plan for construction somewhere between 2026 and 2030. One giant step for mankind. <laughs> so where it is in that uh, window, uh, crystal ball is 
not very clear tonight. Uh, then jumping down to number 14, this is the uh, Indian Creek uh, culvert replacement that Hawthorne Woods is doing. Um, this is uh, just slightly west of uh, Long Road's border, but uh, that is under construction. I know. I, the, is, the traffic uh, is coming down Midlothian. I know. It's increased immensely. That was causing it is yes. really obnoxious. Yeah. I was on Midlothian twice in the last week, and I'm where these cars. It backs up to our subdivision practically at the stoplight. That's how under engineered it is. It can't handle the traffic. So, yeah, it's fun. The road is uh, scheduled to be closed uh, into mid December. Um, as uh, the construction uh, moves along, you know, we'll see what happens to that date. As you know, on Hawthorne Woods is also uh, cognizant of the uh, the pain of road closure. So, um, we'll take that uh, into advisement and hopefully they can expedite that. So, as uh, it moves along, I'll keep the board updated. I have not talked to Dominic, but uh, I have written him. So. Other than that, there's a few uh, permit updates, and if there's any other questions, uh, happy to uh, take those. And the report. All right, thank you very much. Yes, I, I did have oh. one. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh. I, I meant to ask you a long time ago, we talked about the, the uh, stop sign at Robert Parker Coffin in 83. And the landing? And no, no, the, the stop sign for getting on to 83. And we talked about my observation, and I saw another one the other day where people turn right because it doesn't tell them not to. And you cannot see the car that's coming 60 down that road. They came so close. And, and you had talked to somebody at the state, and I don't, you know, it, it, it obviously was going to be discussed, and I've never heard of it. Oh, so you're, you're talking it's a blind spot if you're trying to make a right turn on red from Robert Parker Coffin on 83? Yes. Yeah, we've got even um, pulling out of our parking lot at the school, it's blind too. Um, so there's a, I don't know if they can cut back shrubs or what they can do. So, yeah, we did talk to the state about that. It didn't go anywhere at that point in time. So well, they're probably going to wait for somebody to get killed. And then they're going to say, oh, my goodness. So let me uh, resurrect that uh, request uh, to the state. Um, you know, it was mentioned that landing area. You know, I follow up with IDOT regularly on that. That's one of many things I've got going on that IDOT. Go, go to that and, and, and snake out a bit. And think that you're seeing the cars coming from the north. Is the problem in the vegetation? No. Or is it the road itself? No, it's the road itself. The road itself. itself. Yeah. It just should uh, not be a turn. It should be a no turn on red. Well, or no turn on. Nobody obeys the speed limit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, that's interesting. So um, wouldn't we control putting the no turn on red? Uh, it would be a village request, but I would have to approve it since it's you know, it'd be founded on their traffic signal, much like um, Old McHenry Road and uh, Robert Parker Coffin Road. We had to go through the county to get those notes ready to turn on reds. So um, I'll resurrect that and uh, work with uh, Chris on that to see if maybe uh, that request can get routed through um, a representative's office, maybe get some traction on that. Well, I would urge everyone to go to that corner. Right. And see the, 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 the lack of vision. Well, we should wait till the light turns green before we turn right. <laughs> Don't be the statistic. <laughs> you could be a sacrificial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do know what you're talking about because I had I, the, the signs were blown down um, for the, the quick trip there. And I, uh, was trying to I was driving around trying to see what they looked like and I, I did that turn them and went back around. Yeah, yeah, I just did it. I found one of the signs, not both. So um, okay, anything else? Uh, village president trustee reports there uh, we did have the HOA president's meeting last night at the village tavern. 
Um, I, I think it was pretty successful. It lasted just short of two hours, 25 people attended. Um, several of the larger HOAs were there, not all. Um, and I, I don't know how uh, you didn't get a, a, the invite, but... Uh, I didn't get an invite either, I don't think. Yeah, we talked about it in the board meeting and we didn't notice it as a public meeting either, so, yeah. Um, so, that gave us a little more freedom. Well, when you come right down to it, it's my responsibility. A reminder would be nice. <laughs> Thank you, Rita, for being nice to me. Because I'm like, I try hard. <laughs> So, but anyways, it was a good meeting last night, and I, I want to thank um, Jeff, right, for being there, right? I want to thank uh, Keith Kaiser was there and gave a police report update and good dialogue there. I want to uh, thank Chris, and I also want to thank the Village Tavern for hosting us. They stayed open specially for us. So. Was there a presentation or agenda then? Yeah, so we got to get it out. There is a presentation. Oh, yeah. I'll send it out. Um, and, but we need to also get it out to the HOA presidents and then any of the other materials that we promised to get them to. So that's all I have in my report. Um, Trustee Borowski? Um, just wanted to um, give a quick update on the contract for the uh, um, uh, garbage management. Mm -hmm. um, Walter Willis um, responded back to me today. He's very willing to be participating in our discussions, um, independent of which direction we head off in. Um, he, basically is involved in all the contract negotiations around the county. Um, so what I'd like to do is ask Chris if we set up a kickoff meeting, conference call, phone call with Walter, myself, uh, Chris, or your designee, and get that process started. What is it? Our garbage okay. contract expires with waste <laughs> management at the end of March of 2025. I discovered it through this email exchange <laughs> with everyone. <laughs> You're all laughing because I did. And I'm like, geez, I wonder when our contract expires. Um, and uh, so we we have we have to look at do we bid it or what do we do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. End of report. Thank you. Um, just add that to the list of things we got to do. Never end. Uh, Trustee Jamil. So I have uh, uh, kind of leading to the board uh, in my neighborhood. There was a big time theft. Uh, you know at Indian Creek subdivision. So since we contract with the Lake County Police Department, do we get any updates immediately as the incident happens? And, and also the follow-ups, because the neighbors are concerned that you know the police department has not been able to find you know uh, the stuff which was stolen, obviously. Uh, any updates? Uh, do receive uh, from the Lake County Police Department. Uh, how does that work uh, for that in a matter? Trustees should be able to get the incident report the day when it happens, and then the follow-up report. How does that work? for the protocol? Because we contract with the Lake County Police Department, so obviously the resident is concerned. She shot an email to all of us, I believe. I actually talked, I actually met with her. I actually met with her. I spent uh, an hour with her. Um, but I'll let Chris talk about it. And she also came to my door and knocked on my door, too. So, yeah. 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 yeah, we, with mixed success, get immediate notifications on things so far. So there's only been a few. I know in the past we get major, major incident updates. So Keith will, or um, the sheriff on duty will call us to let us know what happens. Um, in this case, um, I think you might have told me that it. Yeah, I contacted then I, the, the sheriff. Knocked on our door, and my wife. I was talking to Chris, and um, right after the incident, and I said, "Hey, Chris, uh, our neighborhood. My neighbor just got broken into." And so that's how you found out. Yeah. So I'm working with Keith to make sure we're getting notifications promptly, and then the goal would be to immediately disseminate some kind of comment, whatever we can say, to let you guys know what's going on. So just to clarify that, so if Lake County Sheriff sees a unusual incident within Long Grove, then they, they should notify Chris right away with that announcement, and then Chris sort of determines how that how that gets distributed or if it needs to get distributed. And, you know, Chris just spoke about the follow-up. If it's a big issue, Lake County's been very good in terms of working with us to follow up. Like, you know, I mentioned a couple of meetings, our last couple of meetings ago about the shooting incident or the, or the gun discharge incident. They follow up quite regularly with us when there's something like that that happens. Yep. 
I know they spent quite a bit of time on the case in your neighborhood. Um, how did they, how did they gain entry? They had an unlocked window in the back of the house. Um, and okay, so I'll, I'll, do, I'll do this diplomatically because it's really sensitive. So they were targeted. Um, they, um, I think that started from um, their Facebook post and so forth. Uh, and um, they obviously cased this neighbor for a while. And uh, they, um, they, they basically knew when they were gonna be gone and they broke into the house when they were gone and took a significant amount of valuables out of the house. And it was the only one in the neighborhood and uh, they were targeted. And um, uh, it, they believe it's related to uh, incidents that have happened in other North Shore uh, communities um, targeting uh, uh, this one, I'll, I'll just put it out there, Asians is what it was, right? And um, they're, they're, they're profiling them and they're, they're going after them and they're, they're getting things uh, social media and other aspects to go after them, and it was uh, a Latin America uh, gang they believe it's related to, and so they, they take the stuff and they ship it back. Um, so I don't know, I don't want to, I know that uh, the resident emailed you all and gave you more details, so it's, it's incredibly sensitive. I spent an hour with her. I think the issue that I have, and I know um, Jessica Gisick, who's the Lake County board member that's up by us, um, she emailed me. Um, she is talking to the sheriff because the resident does not feel like the detectives took her seriously. Um, so she's voiced her concern, and so I don't know where that, that escalation's at, but by now I don't know that there's anything we can do to recover the goods. They're probably long gone. Sent via FedEx or whatever, you know, international courier they can get to another country. So I probably said too much, but that's what I know, and I know a lot more than that. If you want to ask more, I can tell you offline. The question I have is, uh, was the bridge uh, ended up getting hit again? Uh, because I kind of thought of, uh, you know, on the social media, I saw something to that effect. Was that a true uh, incident happened again, or was that just some fake social media post? When was that? I think about two to three weeks ago. Oh, it actually got struck, but the picture was an old picture that they posted in the newspaper. There was yeah. one that didn't happen though. That they it stopped right before and then backed up and got away. But oh. that wasn't in the finally. <laughs> the picture that was in the Daily Herald was from years ago. It, it was Greg Jackson was in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the one that just got posted in the newspaper. And I'm looking, oh that's Greg. <laughs> they picked like the worst one that's actually damaged. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bobby. I, I was gonna ask, um, is the sheriff aware of the profiling? Yes. Of yeah, they told us. Well, I really would like to finish my sentence. I'm sorry, Bobby. Of the profiling of Asians throughout the county? Is it happening in Asian interest in other places in the county? That's what we were told, yeah. Are they addressing it? Well, they're working with uh, the other municipalities because there's multiple police departments involved, right? And what are we doing? I, uh, my point is, we did nothing about the kids who, who um, uh, did the bar. Um, and so, do we do anything about anything, or do we just ignore it and hope it'll go away? Yeah, I don't know, Bobby. The best suggestion I could give is to have a quarterly meeting with the county sheriff department with the village so that we can get at least you know what the procedural thing is and how they go about investigating the crime because the resident here in this situation where i just uh, talked to you about is she's really upset well yes. i i i think that that's that's this side of it my side here is what are we doing to prevent um, and, and is there anything to do to prevent? And are they doing anything to prevent? Not for, for us, but for the county as a whole. That, 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 that is more my question. Yeah, so my HOA asked for, which I think we got last night, um, a cheat sheet on what you should be doing to prevent crime. Well, see, 
<laughs> this this is, is how we do things now. It's, it, here's the department tells you what you should be doing. No, tell me what you're doing. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. You know, don't throw it back on me. Yeah. It, it, and, and, and so, it's, I, I, I heard the pain. I've not talked to her, but I heard the pain in her and, and how devastating just a robbery is. But to put it on your nationality is even worse. Yep. So let's not ignore it. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure what you want us to do, Bobby. Maybe you can make some suggestions there, because I'm not sure I where you're going from. That's not my blame. The Lake, the Lake County Sheriff is a professional organization with a lot of resources, with a detective team, an investigative team, with crime labs. I mean, I, I'm not sure what, I mean, obviously I don't know the details exactly what they're doing to investigate this, but, but I'm, not, I'm not sure what else we could do. We don't have our own police department. We can do public notifications to say, lock your doors, lock your windows, I put cameras up, put lighting up. I mean, we can do stuff like that, but outside what, of that, what are they sure. doing? Well, like I said, I don't know. Okay, stuff. that's my question. But, what are they doing? But if you want us to find out, let's have that dialogue that's what with I the county sheriff. But, I, but they're, who I'm sure is doing everything they can given their resources. I know right? they're perfect. And I know they work <laughs> I hard. They are, I know they work hard. I'm not saying that but, they don't. But what do you do to, I mean, I, I, when I saw that email and had the conversation, the, the word Asian to me, you know, I, 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 I pigeonhole that a little bit in my mind because to me a crime is a crime. I don't care whose house it's broken into. I don't care the amount of valuable stolen. It's a crime. I don't want to see it in long road. And whether they were targeted or not, I don't know if that's true. Um, I don't know why they were targeted. But any crime to me is a crime that I don't want to see happen in long road, independent of nationality or claims of, of discrimination. I, I just... A crime's a crime. It's a horrible thing. We don't want it. And I hope and trust the Lake County Sheriff's doing their job. Chris can get some more details to fulfill your request, I'm sure. But outside of that, I think Lake County Sheriff does a really good job. They've got great resources, good crime lab, and in the experiences we've had with them before, they've had very, very thorough follow-up. This may be an exception. I don't know. But um, they've done a great job for us, and I, I just think there's some amount of trust in, in that organization that we have to give them in the benefit of the doubt. Just as you asked questions earlier, mm -hmm. is not a sign of negativity. It is a sign of wishing to have more information. That's right. That's exactly what I'm doing. That's right. Questions do not mean that I am anti-anything. It means that I want more information. We, we deserve more information. And it may be there. It may not. If it's not, then that's another issue. And let me suggest something. You've never been discriminated against, have you? I'm a Polish, a son of a Polish immigrant who was spit at and called a dumb Polak okay, in the 70s. Then, then you have, then okay, you so have, I want to hear about it. Every Polish have, joke told in my, in my household, my dad sat there in tears, frustration, and real anger because he... he I'm, so, so... I'm so excuse myself. Um, all right. Wait, because I have a question to ask. I need your mind. <laughs> can you stay? So, anyways, can we... Anyways, Keith should have been here tonight. He wasn't, uh, so can you could answer more well, questions. Let me, let me say it down to you, it's a question I've asked you several times. We used to get information on yeah. not not so and so got stopped for speeding, but unusual occurrences that, in the town. So that when Joe, the neighbor, asks you, you don't go. Yeah, we're not getting it. Bobby, we're not getting any of that information. Not only that, because they moved to the new CAD system that was supposed to give us richer information, they're not giving us anything. So they're trying to figure it out. Yeah, I'm so, not getting anything. So we're supposed to. Okay, so we have to remind them that we. Yeah, and we, and we talked with Keith last night. So, yeah. So we have an issue right now. Yeah. All right. I'm going to keep us moving. Can I ask a question? Sure. And if it's, an, you know, if it's not a good time to bring it up, so be it, but I don't know where else to bring it up. 
Um, <clears throat> would it be worth us considering, and, and I don't know if it's uh, legal, strictly, when we are asked for special use permits regarding smaller lots, is it possible to say if, if the square footage of the lot is X, this is the maximum building you can, maximum size building you can put on it? I, I believe that in the railroad towns where the land is very expensive and they tear down the little Cape Cods and they build 3,000 square foot. We have it in our I think, I think yeah. the building ordinances is a high narrative for space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the review. And that has to do with the subdivision that was built many years ago. That was just what you said. And I think the trustees at that time says never again. And so that's why it was instituted. I guess we'd have to maybe Vic remembers that whole process. But, but Isn't it the, the permeable? It's the permeable. Uh, we have a variety of regulations. All yeah. We have a variety of regulations, all of which uh, have an impact on how big a building can be. Okay. Um, and <laughs> if you go to our zoning code and our residential, we have a specific matrix that allows a minimum amount, I shouldn't say minimum, it allows a an amount of floor area, but to go above that, it's going to be tied to the size of your lot. Now, we do have regulations in our zoning code that except in a couple of very limited circumstances, no lot can be less than 33,000 square feet. Um, he was saying 0 0.7, 0 0.75. By my calculations, that probably comes under the threshold. Uh, I know the 0 0.7 does, the 0 0.75 is right right at that uh, cusp. So we're going to have to get more detail. That's based on the total acreage of the property, too. Um, you know, where the streets are included in the uh, it, it, it's Well, it depends on the district and all that, yes. There has to meet, it has to meet the minimum uh -huh. lot size of the district in gross area, but no individual lot can be less than 33,000 square feet. Again, we have a couple of carve-outs, but for the most part, that's how it works. Our regulations today, if you were to come in with that proposal without any change of zoning code, I haven't seen his, you know, specific plans, but sounds like he'll be coming short. Five thousand square feet on point seven acres is a lot of building. It's a lot of, it's a lot a of, lot of building, yeah. and that that's a that's huge. Um, so, you know, that's what we have in Evanston. I don't think that's what we have in Long Grove. <laughs> but, but some communities, you're absolutely right, and Hinsdale had a problem yeah. with it years ago where they, you know, tear down little houses and they put big mansions on them. But so at the time, it meant... We're losing, we're losing people here. So, Trustee Jamil, do you have anything else? Okay, can we continue that? You're, um, you're next. <laughs> I, just, I don't have a report, but I was going to bring it up at that, that time because okay. I don't know anything else that's appropriate. I, I don't I mean, we, we do have those kind of regulations in place. Should we um, think of changing them? Well, I, I think that's a, a policy question. I mean, right now... To make them smaller? The buildings. No, the, the lot. Well, the, if the, the ratio. If the lot is X, then you have to proportionately scale down the building. Right. You can't put 5,000 square feet. Well, and, 6, again, he, he would be coming in for a PUD. Yep. Um, he may require some text amendment changes to... Uh, to do what he wants to do, again, we don't have enough detail to be sure, but let's say that he can he can meet our requirements and just wants to have a rezoning and a PUD. As part of the PUD, we could have regulations that would limit the building size. That's something that we have as a, as a right as conditions for any kind of special okay. use permit. And I, I guess I'm, I'm putting it out to see if anybody else it has an interest in something like that. Do, I mean, is it just basically reviewing the code of what we have now? Yeah, I, I, I think my suggestion would be let him actually make an application and let the, the plan come in, well, first let the staff review happen so we can really identify how his proposal aligns with our codes. Because 
you know, there was a, a lot of, I can handle that, I can handle that, but we don't have the data to confirm that yes. he can handle it in the context of our current ordinance. Yes. And if he doesn't, then he's going to have to identify what he's going to do, either modify his plans or ask the village to modify its ordinances. And that's where the rubber hits the road in terms of how you all would sure. ultimately consider it. And I, I, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to target anybody. It's just this keeps coming in before us. You know, where we, where we all know the opening line is nobody wants big, big lots anymore. And it's like, well, obviously that's not accurate. So if if we if, if we just had. Maybe if we, we could review what we have and see if it's working for us, given those kinds of issues, you know, like, okay, so if you want to if you want to jam this stuff in, here's your parameters. You know, you don't have to do a tiny house, but you can't do a McMansion on this thing. I, I'm just wondering if, if, yeah, if that's that what is. I was thinking too. If we can't get fewer lots, maybe we can get smaller homes. You get whatever you want right now. You don't have to agree to the PUD. You get the negotiation power. That, that, that ultimately is where the uh, right. the issue lands. But I, I, I mean, where that would come in in terms of the existing zoning and PUD really depends on the threshold questions of can he do within our current ordinances what he wants to do, assuming that he gets all the PUD approvals. Mm -hmm. Um, that was not patent to me as I was listening to him. I just wanted to put it out there. Anything else? End of report. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trustee O'Reilly. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Trustee Tenuti. Okay, Village Manager's Court. Yep. I'd like a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, moved by Trustee O'Connor. Second. Second by Trustee Tenuti. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, being adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night. I had plenty here. Ah.